I had a, a friend at one of the races that was driving one of these special built cars in One Life of America. And, and he said, yeah, he said, I thought I had a really good chance. I could win this thing. I had this lightweight car. And then I looked and read somewhere and found out you're going to be in this 911 twin turbo all-wheel drive car. And he goes, well, second doesn't sound too bad anymore. I've had other automobile manufacturers offer me cars and money to race. Uh, and the biggest problem with that is I'd have to race against Porsches. Here we produce the one, 107 cars a day. 13 of this are Targas. Uh, the original Targa design was introduced in the middle of the 60s. And it was a, a very new way of open air driving. When the Targa ceased to be produced uh, in 1994, the Porsche engineers had all these very lo loyal Targa fans to appease and they decided okay we're going to build a whole new design based on the new 911. The roof rails that we have along the sides had to be as, as lean as possible and uh, we had to get make this glass area as large as possible. You have the problem that you're dealing with a car that's uh, able to travel at least 170 miles an hour top speed and at 170 there's one hell of a, uh, a pull, aerodynamic pull on the side glass now we're asking them to do to um, engineer a roof glass, which was about four times the surface area, but still going to stay in place at 170 miles an hour. The idea of having the whole roof glass is terrific, and to have that work successfully is a uh, pretty uh, a nifty bit of uh, craftsmanship. It has this fantastic glass roof, which you can open at high speeds and. Uh, you can drive around on a miserable day and look at the sky and say, well, it's gray, but at least I see something. It's like a jet fighter, you know, it's like a bubble top car. In the full open position, it's as quiet, if not quieter, than a sunroof coupe. And you can have a lot of fun watching their top slide back and forth and pushing all the little buttons and levers. Porsche has to think of fun all the time because fun is an intrinsic part of what a Porsche is. It's perfectly useful day in, day out transportation, but it has to be more than that. Every Porsche has to have a percentage of amusement, a percentage of entertainment baked into the mix. You always find a little bit different way to drive the car you get a little bit more out of it the next time you drive that mountain road. Many other cars that I end up driving during the year on photo shoots and things, they end up, you know, you've done everything you could in the car instantly, and you don't feel like there's much else you could do in it. Whereas this 911, you keep driving it, you keep learning a little bit more about it, and it becomes a totally entertaining car as a driver. It's always a car to me that impresses the people inside it more than the people outside it, you know, and that's what I like. I like to get in it and get out on the road. That's what I enjoy. Not parking it in front of a cafe and just leaning on it, you know. <laughs> that's not it. Every time a new Porsche model comes out, we say, well, this is it. In fact, we have got ourselves in trouble because we've said, this is the best 911 ever, ever built. Then the next model comes out and we say, no, this is the best 911 ever built. So we stopped saying it's the best 911 built until they stopped building 911s.